Canadian tech stocks. The question is, do we even have any other than Shopify? Because it seems to be the only one we ever hear about. But did you know that there are over 10 tech stocks listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange? And in today's video, we're going to be speaking about two of them, determining whether or not they are good options to add to your portfolio. Hey, what's going on, savers and investors? I hope you're all having a great day as always. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name's Griffin, and I'm really excited for today's video because it was a lot of fun to prepare and has been been highly requested by the audience over the past couple of weeks. We're all well aware of the fact that the American tech industry is one of the largest and most influential worldwide and I've even covered many of these stocks previously on the channel such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, etc. But for Canadians, investing in the American tech industry right now is somewhat unfavorable due to the CAD to USD currency conversion rate. And so for this reason, I thought it was really important to highlight some great options of Canadian tech stocks. Now I'm not saying that as a Canadian you can't still invest in the American stock market and make a high enough return in order to still make it worthwhile for you even taking into consideration the currency conversion and the fees associated with this however I know a lot of my viewers are more interested in some Canadian focused investing content as well as stock picks that are listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange for this reason over the past couple of weeks I've had quite a few viewers ask me to make some Canadian tech stock specific analysis videos because this niche really doesn't get nearly as much attention as the American tech industry and I'd even go as far as saying that other than Shopify many viewers aren't even aware of the fact that Canada does have some other tech stock options out there. For this reason I've covered an ETF on the channel before known as the iShares S&P TSX capped information technology ETF ticker symbol XIT on the Toronto Stock Exchange and this is an ETF that seeks long-term capital growth by replicating the performance of the S&P TSX capped information technology index of which there are currently 16 stocks that make up the index. If you're looking for exposure to the entire Canadian tech industry this can be a great option to add to your portfolio but in today's video we're going to be looking at two specific stocks that make up this ETF dissecting their Q1 earnings in the way that we've been doing over the recent Q1 earnings analysis videos that you all seem to really enjoy. Looking at the top 10 holdings of this ETF the largest holding is by far Shopify at 42.82% of the fund's weight for a notional value of $131.43 million. And we won't be speaking about Shopify today because we've already made a full Q1 earnings walkthrough video on Shopify last week that you can find a link to down in the description. Now in today's video, we're going to be covering the Q1 earnings and analysis of CSU, which is Constellation Software Incorporated and Gib.A, which is CG I incorporated. A couple things to mention here. First off, if you enjoy this video, I would absolutely love to make a part two and part three, maybe going over open text, Descartes, Lightspeed, Canaxis, etc. So let me know down in the comments if that would be of interest to you and smash the like button while you're at it because I'll only be making a part two going over those stocks. If this video gets above 600 likes, I think we can do it. Now, the tech sector is by far the best performing stock category in Canada right now. If we can compare the one year chart of the capped information technology index to say the capped energy index or the capped REIT index just to name a few but you know this doesn't necessarily mean that this is a better opportunity for investors because again prices are quite high in the tech industry and is not necessarily reflective whatsoever of the overall economy as we speak right now. If you did get a chance to watch my Shopify Q1 earnings analysis video we spoke about how fundamentally the stock is highly over valued in my opinion, but that when it comes to online and tech companies, the market still seems to be incredibly bullish on these stocks, which is one of the reason why this index is still up 50% in the year. The point I'm trying to make is that even though many of these Canadian tech stocks are performing well in 2020, always maintain a critical and analytical view when you're investing in stocks and continue only investing in companies that you are personally comfortable with once conducting a proper analysis and not getting caught up in FOMO syndrome. If you're still new to investing and need to open up a brokerage account, then I would recommend you either use Quest Trade or Wellsimple Trade. I've made video reviews on both that you can find below along with links to sign up and receive free money once a sign up is complete. So on that note, let's get into the video. The first Canadian stock we'll be covering is Constellation Software Incorporated, ticker CSU on the Toronto Stock Exchange. This stock has 
has a 20.50% stake in the S&P TSX capped information technology index, which is the second largest holding after Shopify. Currently at the time of filming this video, the stock is trading at around $1,532.43 per share, which I know for a lot of viewers may be quite a bit of an investment to even purchase a share or two, but I still highly recommend that you watch this overview and analysis of the stock because even if you invest in say the XIT ETF, well as an investor you should be aware of what this company is and what their financials look like as of Q1 2020 and it's also the second largest Canadian tech stock which is very impressive. Going over the stock quote, the current price per share puts this company at a market cap of $32.5 billion and a price to earnings ratio of 98.66 which let's just be real even for a tech stock is extremely high. In contrast to this, Apple has a PE of 24.93, Microsoft a PE of 30.64, and Shopify has a PE of Oh wait, Shopify doesn't even have a PE? Never mind. Year to date, Constellation is still up roughly 20.60%, which happens to be above February price point and up roughly 34.5% since March lows, which is really impressive considering the broad market right now. The trailing 12 month earnings per share is 15.53, which is actually really high and probably contributing to the bullish price point, but we'll be discovering more on that once we dive into the earnings report. Surprisingly, CSU actually has a dividend of $5.67 per share at a forward dividend of 0.37%. So nothing really to get all that excited about, but for a relatively smaller large cap tech stock that has seen tremendous growth in the past couple of years, any dividend is somewhat out of the ordinary and well received. Now, before we dive into the Q1 earnings of Constellation, you might be wondering at this point what the heck this company even does because it doesn't get all that much attention. Constellation is basically basically a software umbrella company, I guess we could say, that's main strategy is to acquire small software startups and then hold them for the long term while these startups grow over time, creating revenue for the company. In fact, CSU has acquired over 260 startups since being founded in 1995 and focuses mainly on the acquisition of vertical market software companies, meaning companies that create software for one particular industry or market instead of diverse diversified software that is applicable to many industries and since then this has created a constellation of businesses, no pun intended. Their business is also divided into public sector customers at around 67% of their revenue and then private sector clients at around 33% of their revenue. Now that we have a bit more context around the company and the stock quote, let's dive into the Q1 earnings report to see what we're dealing with and as mentioned earlier, I'll be doing a quicker walkthrough of these numbers than in previous companies specific Q1 earnings analysis videos to keep things more concise from a time standpoint. Starting with the overview of the document, I'd like to bring your attention to this paragraph where the company breaks down its different revenue streams, which will be important for when we're analyzing revenue over time in a couple of minutes. It states that the revenue consists primarily of software license fees, maintenance, and other recurring fees, professional services, and hardware sales. As we can see, they have relatively diverse income streams at various touch points in a customer's interaction with the company, which is beneficial to increase revenues from each customer. In the first table of the consolidated interim statement of income, I'd first like to bring your attention to the fact that all the numbers are in millions of US dollars, even though this is a Canadian company. Revenues for Q1 2020 sit at $953 million, which is up 16% or $134 million since Q1 of 2019, so amazing growth from a revenue standpoint. In fact, when looking at revenue growth per calendar year, it's evident that Constellation is seeing consistent and hefty growth in revenues year over year as the company continues to expand. I would like to take this moment to speak about the expected risks and uncertainties the company has noted as a result of the whole medical issue, which could very well have an impact on revenues in the coming quarters and that is important for you as an investor to be aware of. The company has stated that the medical issue has had disruptive effects in the countries in which the company operates and has adversely impacted many of its business units operations to date, including the cancellation by certain customers of their ongoing software maintenance contracts and the suspension or cancellation even of new software purchases. The future impact of the medical issue and any economic impact are largely unknown and rapidly evolving. So basically, like all companies, Constellation may be seeing truncated revenues in 
the coming months depending on how their customers are financially impacted. Expenses have also increased however in the order of 12% quarter over quarter, meaning Constellation has been able to increase their revenues at a favorable expense ratio in relation to their revenues. The main reason why expenses have increased however is due to a much larger staffing cost, meaning the company is focusing on growth of operations, bringing me to my next point which is the cash flows from operating activities. Basically all the cash flows derived from Constellation's operations appear in this table and we can see a tremendous increase of 27.1% quarter over quarter. In the same vein, the company's cost of revenue is increasing slightly quarter over quarter, but in relation to their revenue growth, their gross profit is boasting larger figures every quarter. This is quite typical of a company that is focusing on rapid expansion and doesn't necessarily raise any red flags for me. Moving on to the net income, it has actually decreased by 4% from 87 million in Q1 2019 to 83 million in Q1 2020, but when looking at each quarter over the past year, the basic earnings per share is actually relatively stagnant. The cash flows from investing activities are also lower than in Q1 2019 due primarily to their acquisition of businesses, but remember that this is the company's business model, acquiring startup tech companies, which will provide Constellation with increased revenues over time. Let's now move on to the balance sheet of Constellation to get a sense of the company's financial position. Starting with their assets, current assets sit at $1.163 billion, up 9.5% since Q4 of 2019, with their cash position having increased by $48 million. In fact, their accounts receivable and other assets have also increased. A quick note on the liquidity of the company, Constellation's total net cash position has increased by $180 million to 216 million in the three months ended March 31st, 2020, resulting from cash flows from operations exceeding the net capital deployed on acquisitions plus dividends. As I've mentioned in previous analysis videos, this is a positive to see a company increasing their liquidity and net cash position in a period of financial uncertainty for all companies, such as what we're living through right now. CSU's current liabilities are $1.809 billion, which would not be ideal considering their current assets, but this is mainly due to $1.035 billion in deferred revenues that are present in the current liabilities. Deferred revenues are when a company receives payment from a customer before the product or service has been delivered and only counts as a liability because the revenue recognition process has not been completed. So even though this deferred revenue does not appear in the current liabilities, boosting the total figure, this isn't actually a liability per se that the company is responsible for paying. For this reason, if we subtract that $1.035 billion from the current liabilities, this would put the current liabilities at only $774 million, resulting in a current ratio of 1.5. A current ratio of 1.5 isn't necessarily ideal, typically above 2 is what we'd be after for a healthy company, but considering the rapid growth of the company, this really doesn't bother me all that much. Total assets are $3.57 billion, having grown by 2.55% since Q4 2019, and when looking at an annual view of asset growth, it's evident that the company is putting some emphasis on growing their assets. Again, liabilities are, in my opinion, somewhat skewed from the deferred revenues, which would put the liability figure at a more favorable figure. All in all, Constellation's balance sheet is decent, with no huge red flags, but with that said, I would like to see a better ratio between their assets to liabilities, especially since this is a tech company that can greatly minimize their cost of revenue while skyrocketing actual revenues that could be poured back into growth and asset expansion. Now finally, what are my thoughts on Constellation Software Incorporated? First off, I really like the rapid and hefty growth of the company in regards to revenue with the low and somewhat stagnant cost of revenues. This is truly a tech company that is focusing on maximizing their growth while still remarkably remaining very profitable with an earnings per share of above 15, which is really high, and the company has not been buying back shares or issuing new shares out to the public, which would dilute share value and is not 
something that I personally like to see when investing in a company. The balance sheet is fine and considering their business model, the company should have no issues maintaining their growth and remaining financially healthy even during this difficult economic period. Let's remember that the company is built up of hundreds of smaller tech companies which spread out their revenue from various product lines and revenue streams. Another interesting point is that they derive 67% of their revenue from the public sector which is always great to see as governments love to spend money especially in Canada. With that said, I think the share price is still extremely pricey considering their trailing 12 month PE ratio of 70.91 which is just crazy expensive even for the tech industry. This to me is similar to what I said in my Shopify analysis video where investors right now are just insanely bullish on tech and online companies during this whole medical issue but is this justified? I'm not necessarily sure it is. From a fundamental standpoint a PE of 70 means that as an investor you're willing to spend 70 years to make back your investment. Now yes we all know that with tech companies that's not how you need to necessarily look at it with share growth being what you're after typically but I'm just saying to be cautious with an investment that is this overpriced. That said Shopify is now trading above $1,100 last time I checked on the Toronto Stock Exchange which I called in my last video stating that the market is just greedy and simply doesn't care about fundamentals when it comes to tech companies and this is proof. In conclusion I could very well see this stock continue rising in value over the coming months and years as investors seem to be more focused on earnings growth and expansion rather than financial fundamentals but if you do make an investment in this company keep an eye on the stock price and upcoming earnings reports. All right moving on now to the second Canadian stock in today's video I was going to cover Canaxis because it's been requested many times on the channel but since the price to earnings ratio is also crazy high at 150 I thought you know what I'll keep it for the part two or part three of these tech stock analysis videos so if you want to see a part two and part three of these Canadian tech stock videos remember to leave a comment down below letting me know that that's of interest to you and smash the like button to get this video above 600 likes. The company we'll now be speaking about is CGI Incorporated, a ticker symbol GIB-A.TO on the Toronto Stock Exchange or GIB on the New York Stock Exchange. This stock represents 13.92% of the total weight in the S&P TSX Capped Information Technology Index, which is just after Constellation Software. The current share price on the TSC is $85.25, down roughly 0.39% in the day, and I'm filming this on a Thursday evening, so these numbers may have changed by the time you see and watch this video. This current share price is down around 22% year to date and up 24.67% since March lows, which is quite a poorer stock price performance than Constellation, Shopify, Canaxis, and other Canadian tech companies, so we'll try to uncover why that that is in this video when going through the Q1 earnings report. The market cap is just under $22 billion at $21.91 billion, so around $10 billion less than Constellation, but this company actually generates significantly more revenues than Constellation and has a much more reasonable price point, putting the trailing 12 months PE at 18.77 and the earnings per share at 4.54. CGI is a business consulting services firm headquartered in Montréal, Quebec that operates in hundreds of locations across the world delivering end-to-end -end services and solutions to client firms including strategic IT and business consulting, systems integration, intellectual property, and managed IT process services. Over the years, the company has acquired multiple other firms including Stanley Incorporated, Logica, American Management Systems, and many more which has allowed CGI to expand into multiple different technology niches with now over 400 offices worldwide and 70,000 employees. Now that we have a bit more context about CGI's operations and their current stock quote, let's dive into the Q1 earnings report to see how this company has fared during the first quarter of this very difficult year. Starting with the statement of earnings, note that this is all in thousands of Canadian dollars and the revenues for Q1 2020 are $3.131 billion, which is up 2.1% since this same quarter in 2019. For a company 
company as large and established as CGI with revenues in the billions of dollars per quarter, an increase in 2.1% for a quarter is actually quite decent. The net earnings have decreased by 1.1% quarter over quarter, which interestingly, basic earnings per share has actually increased by 3 cents since Q1 2019. We'll be speaking about this once we look over the cash flow statement, but this is primarily due to the fact that CGI has been buying back a lot of shares over the past quarters and years. Everything else in the statement of earnings is pretty standard on this earnings report and doesn't really raise any red flags for me. If we take a look at the annual revenues, however, CGI has managed to consistently increase their revenues year over year, but their net income remains somewhat stagnant as their cost of revenue increases in close relation to the increasing revenues. The increasing earnings per share is also visible right here, where the EPS has been increasing year over year, but their net income remains relatively flat with decreasing basic average shares out in the market. Again, we'll speak about this when looking over the cash flow state Moving on now to the balance sheet of CGI to see what type of financial health the company is in, let's start as always with the assets. Current assets sit at $3.73 billion, which is up 14.52% since September 30th, 2019, so tremendous increase in current assets. The cash and cash equivalents are $302.49 million, up 41.5%, demonstrating the company's focus on increasing their liquidity, which I personally like to see during an uncertain economic climate. The current liabilities of CGI are $3.45 billion with again $500 million in deferred revenues, but nonetheless the current ratio dividing current assets by current liabilities is 1.08 and this is much lower than what I personally like to see for a company that I would want to invest in because this means that CGI has enough current assets to barely cover their current liabilities of which if the company were to face severe revenue impact impacts from a period such as say the medical issue, they might be in financial trouble to cover their current liabilities, having to dig into long-term assets or raising new capitals through taking on more debt or issuing out more shares or issuing debentures. I specifically don't like this situation for CGI, mainly because if we quickly jump to the cash flow statement, they spent $1.05 billion in repurchasing company stock, which if you've heard me speak about what the benefits of buying back shares are in previous videos, you would know that doing this has absolutely no financial benefit to the company. The only benefit that buying back shares has is raising the share price and potentially the earnings per share as we did in fact see for CGI since there are less shares in the open market bringing down supply and raising the price but ultimately this doesn't really have a positive impact on the company itself. Jumping back to the balance sheet, the total assets of CGI as of Q1 2020 are $14.597 billion, which is a 15.6% jump since Q3 2019, but two elements I want to note are the right-of-use assets and the goodwill, both of which aren't really productive assets in my opinion. The right-of-use assets are a leasee's right to use an asset over the life of a lease, so unless I'm interpreting this wrong in the case of CGI, this basically means that the company has leased probably a couple of buildings and have added that to the asset column, but this isn't really an asset for CGI in my opinion that has a long-term value. The next element I want to highlight is the goodwill, which if you aren't aware of what this is, it's an excess equity value that a company retains when it underpays for another asset or company when it acquires it. For example, if CGI were to purchase another company, which they do a fair share of for say $1 million and the company was actually worth $1.2 $2 million. In this scenario, CGI would have obtained $200,000 in goodwill. Now, obviously, this is a really simplistic and dumbed down example, but hopefully it allows you to understand what goodwill is. And the reason I say it's not necessarily a productive asset is because goodwill is not really an asset that companies can sell and access the funds if they need some capital to work with. Warren Buffett even calls goodwill a soft asset for this exact reason. The total liabilities of CGI as of Q1 2020 sit at $7.837 billion, which isn't terrible considering the $14.58 billion in assets, but if we didn't take into consideration goodwill and right-of-use assets, this balance sheet would be, in my opinion, quite unfavorable to a prolonged rough earnings patch. Regardless of that, I just think the liabilities are a bit high considering the total assets and the nature of said assets. Let's now dive into the cash flow statement of CGI and speak more about what I was referring 
referring to with the company buying back shares. First off, the cash provided by operating activities for Q1 2020 was $396.49 million as a sum of the net earnings, increased amortization on their assets, and a decrease in net non-cash working capital items, which if this term is new to you, it is the sum of inventory and receivables of the company at the given period. Anyhow, these figures are relatively fine and don't need all that much analysis, but I did want to mention them. The investing activities are relatively fine with the bulk of their investing in business acquisitions and purchase of property, which I personally don't have a huge issue with since business acquisitions typically have a positive net long-term impact on the company. Where I do want to bring your attention to though is the financing activity section where there are two notable items. The first one being the $1.076 billion increase in long-term debt, meaning CGI has raised capital through issuing debt, which could be bonds, the ventures, regardless, they have taken on about $1 billion of new debt in the first quarter of the year. And at the same time, they have spent $1.026 billion buying back shares. Like, honestly, I'm not sure what the company's motives are to spend so much money buying back shares other than having the share price increase. But unless I'm missing something, why take a billion dollars in new long-term debt, but then buy back shares for a billion dollars instead of decreasing the liabilities on the balance sheet? In in fact, if we take a look at the annual cash flow statements, the company has spent billions of dollars since 2016 buying back shares. I honestly just think that CGI could possibly put that capital to better use by reinvesting it into growth activities or reducing debt, so I'm not loving that in their cash flow statement. Other than that, the free cash flows of the company are relatively fine, even though they're buying back shares left and right. I just find that a little bit strange. Now, like I said, the analysis of these two stocks would be a little bit less in depth than other Q1 earnings since I'm fitting two Q1 earnings into one single video. But what are my thoughts now on CGI? First off, I do like CGI's consistent revenue growth over the past calendar years with a strong focus on expansion and investing in new business acquisitions. This is always something that I like to see for a tech stock because ultimately it's what investors seemingly care about most for continuing to drive the price of the shares up over time and maintaining a positive outlook. Tech stocks have definitely been been the most difficult for me to analyze because their share prices really don't fall into a fundamentally rational trend over time, being reflective of the company's financials. Bullish investors on tech and internet companies really seem to look the other way regarding earnings and cash flow statements, with the main focus on revenue growth and expansion of operations. CGI's balance sheet is mediocre, as we determined earlier, and I find their liabilities are somewhat high considering a large portion of assets are derived from goodwill and right of use assets. I would personally like to see the company continue growing their cash position and short term assets while lowering liabilities and long term debt instead of spending billions on buying back shares. The way I see it is if the company does a good job of building their balance sheet and continuing to focus on revenue growth, cash flows from operations and net income, the stock price will organically go up as investors gain confidence in the company. The current stock price is decent with a manageable PE ratio considering considering the tech industry and earnings per share. And honestly, I could very well see the stock reach the $100 range again in the next year based on the income statement and having many investors being quite bullish on tech stocks with this stock also having taken a somewhat of a beating considering the Canadian tech industry. This is basically the only major Canadian tech stock that has had a poor performance since February and could be an opportune time to get in. So what did you think of today's analysis and walkthrough of these two Canadian tech stocks. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making today's video. And if you want to see a part two or part three of this video where I cover other Canadian tech stocks like OpenText, Canaxis, Lightspeed, etc., then make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know that you're interested and smash the like button to get this video up to 600 likes. If you're also interested in seeing some of my other Q1 earnings analysis videos of other companies like RealCan, Shopify, or Air Canada, make sure to check out one of the two videos that I'm overlaying right here. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.